This school dropout lives to go hard and loves to binge drink. I know she drinks a lot, I know she smokes cigarettes, she sits up a lot, she goes out and parties, she does some silly things, but what can I do? Can I just sit down? I just like getting drunk. <laughs> Awesome feeling. It just makes me feel happy. Like, I'm just not me. I'm someone else that I want to be. Like, I don't know. It's just awesome. The drugs I've done is weed. And I've done Ritalin and, like, E. And then there's the violence. And bite and hit and yeah I'm quite aggressive so yeah I don't know how my boyfriend can handle me sometimes <laughs> I feel like I've got the power when I bite I don't know this out-of-work teen also steals and so far she's gotten away with it I just make up just heaps of bullshit like oh it wasn't me or or, or it was me and I just make up some like long ass story explaining why I'm like this <laughs> And the reason behind the bad behaviour, a serious car accident that nearly cost Emerald her life. I became a completely different person and I was on depression pills and stuff and I thought, well, there, this is my life, I don't want it to be like this, I want to have fun, I want to go out every night and party with everyone I love. You still have to find a job. No, I don't. I don't want to have those conversations, it's so stupid. No, it's not stupid, it's just life. Ambulance driver Debbie also dreads one day she'll get a call to a scene and it will be her daughter. My worst fear is she's just out doing what she does and she gets raped or um, that she gets cheeky and rude to someone that's not the right person and they, they absolutely um, knock her out and it could happen quite easily, especially with her mouth. I get free ambulance so it's all good. <laughs> you get really wasted and then come home in the ambulance and I don't have to pay for it. <laughs> Emerald's travelling companion Riley is a 17-year-old who takes full advantage of the comforts of home and mum on her own. I've brought him and his brother up on, the, on my own since he was about eight, so he probably hasn't had as much discipline as he should have had. Didn't have a dad in his life to give him a, you know, a bit of a rough up. She just really can't do anything. She's sort of got no power. I don't exactly tell me to stay in my room, you know, get in your fucking room. She can't exactly do that anymore, so nah, we just do it. And doing it means a truckload of booze, heaps of nicotine and not much else. I like to hang out with my friends and I particularly enjoy drinking. I really enjoy drinking. It's one of my favourite things to do. Well, the thing is, the drinking thing is an issue in our family because of alcoholism, alcoholism on both sides. So that worries me that he's just going to, you know, get worse and worse and worse. And the other thing, I suppose, is, you know, getting a conviction of some sort. And, um, you know, I'd hate to have to go and visit my son in prison. That's the last thing any mother wants. That's because Riley has already had a brush with the law. Me and my mate, Anonymous, stole, like, almost $200 out of a charity box. He and his friends kicked down the letterboxes and I think that's the incident where I got called about the cops, which I was horrified because I thought, well, who in their right mind would want to kick down letterboxes? I'm lazy and just a little Emerald and Riley are off to the Wild West and will stay at a ranch in the depths of Wolf Creek, Montana, USA. Here, it's all about respect, old-fashioned values and a hard day's work. We don't tolerate drinking. We don't tolerate uh, cigarette smoking. We don't tolerate any form of disrespect. I think that the fundamental cause of the disrespect in the teenagers is the lack of dads. The role of fathers is to set the limits and support the rules where the mother is more nurturing and loving. That means it will be seven days of hard discipline from their new dad, Zach. Something neither of these teens have had for a very long time. Nervous to meet the family, but yeah, it's going to be an experience and a half. 
I've never seen like landscape that stretches so far and the roads are just straight. to meet the family. I don't know wearing cowboy hats and everything. Yeah. <laughs> I imagined he'd, he'd have a beard. <laughs> yes. Same. Howdy. Howdy. I'm Riley. Howdy. Good to meet Riley, you. I'm Zach. Hello. Good to meet you guys. I'm Good to meet How you. How do you do, Emerald? Good, thank you. Pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you too. First Thanks. time to America? Yes. For yeah. both of you? First time leaving my country at all. Cool. Well, we've got a really wonderful little place here, and we're very proud of it. It looks and, like a uh, lovely place. Yeah. Are you ready to go inside? Sure. Huh? We do have, yeah, there is plenty of cowboy philosophy. You'll so get a do lot you of ride horses? Yes. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that scary. Uh, I've fallen off horses and I'm scared of them. <laughs> but alas, a fear of riding horses is nothing compared to Zach and Paddy's rules. Nobody wants to be mean to you. Nobody wants to make you do things that you don't want to do. Nobody wants to make you uh, un uncomfortable. But we want to have you take advantage of every chance and opportunity here. There's an awful lot of effort going into helping you guys. We also uh, know that, that tough love is, a pl is, a, is, is good. We know that a little discipline, we've seen the benefits. We understand that you do enjoy cigarettes. And, um, Indeed. We're not going to allow any smoking at all here with this. Are you? <laughs> My mother literally died from smoking. Do we get a beer at the end of, at the end no of the No alcohol. No. <laughs> In fact, is, if I find there's any alcohol anywhere, you will go to the sheriff. Riley and Emerald are in the wild, wild west, discovering just how tough their new parents really are. Because of your ages, there, there will be no alcohol. And if we cross that line, it's not just that I'm going to get upset with you. I will call the sheriff. The deputies will come, and they will take you into the lockup, and you will spend a night in jail. I think that the speech about the sheriff, I think that he's all I reckon he's bluffing. <laughs> but if he does call the sheriff, then we're pretty much. <laughs> we don't do soda pop, or we do well, water. I do have... We do have it here, but it's a reward for good behavior. Instead of that as a reward, if we do a hard day's work, what about just one beer at the end of the day? Oh. I don't want to sit in jail with you. Like, he is treating us like he's, like we're five. It's not so bad after a hard day having a beer, is it? I don't yeah. think. I don't think that it's that hard. You do all the hard work, you yeah. know? You want to be treated, and I mean fizzy pop. I couldn't give... That's for little kids, like... Yeah. Couldn't give I two don't... about a can yeah. of Pepsi if they want to take <laughs> that away. <you> know? <laughs> they can go hard. I'm not, not bothered at all, eh? Well, I always walked into you. Guess how you get down here, room. <laughs> this is going to be fun. No growling, dude. What I'd like you to, to do is, I think there's drawer, empty drawers here, so that you don't feel like you're living out of a suitcase all week. Okay. So, go ahead and we'll start putting some of your things up. What I'd like you to do is, if you think you have anything that would be inappropriate or that would land you into jail, would you go ahead and, and bring it out now with no, no repercussions, no, no anything? So. What is that? Oh, cigarettes? OK. Need my glasses. Just go ahead and lay them out here. Riley? You can have a look at my stuff. Yeah. I hope that they're not night crawlers, eh? Because you might want to pop out for a cheeky dairy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Fucking hard case, eh? All I can say is that they're not going to lay a finger on my um, cigarettes. Now, do you have any cigarettes or anything that you want to... You can look. OK. If you don't have them, that's fine. Mm. If you need us in the middle of the night, I'll be sleeping down here for the most part. 
I was just like, oh my god. Yeah, she looked really depressed there. Eh? I was just sort of thinking that um, I was I was in a loony house, though. Eh? But you're not going to bother us. This little foyer right here is where I'm going to sleep at. All right, awesome. I don't know what his deal is. I don't know how he was brought up, but um, he's definitely a strange man. He's going to be sleeping out there. Yeah. It's pretty weird. It's a bit freakish, if you ask me. Yeah, same. What do you think of him? Uh, I think he thinks he's better than everybody else. Yeah, same. Yeah. I wasn't that surprised that he took my cigarettes, but... I was kind of, I was kind of gutted, but it's all right. I still got another packet that I had from him. <laughs> he doesn't know that though. Sweet. <laughs> I'm not silly. How are we going to maneuver around him? Though? I have no idea because he's going to be sleeping right there. He'll smell it in the morning. Maybe I'll call the sheriff. <laughs> Did you help? For life. <laughs> <laughs> With Zach up and out of their way, like most children, our teenagers waste no time testing the boundaries. It was quite weird, eh, knowing he was out there. He was like a watchdog. Yeah, I felt as if I'd wake up in the middle of the night with him standing over me or something, eh, praying. Or... <laughs> <laughs> I got an eye. What they don't realise is that Zach has other plans. I'm aware of it. No sense in opening up the arsenal yet. So I will pick my fights. And I think other parents should be real keen on what to fight and what not to fight. Well, today, the vet's going to come in, and we will geld the two young stallion colts that we have out here. What does gouting mean? We remove the testicles so that they can no longer be a dad. OK. Thank you. So um, we're having Horse testicles for uh, <laughs> so, stool. It's <laughs> pretty serious. <laughs> yeah. Break your legs a little bit so you got a new there. With castration out of the way, Zach continues the rounds with two moaning teens in tow. Oh, my lips are so sore. Here come uh, Patty's horses. See that horse right there? We had to change its shoe because it uh, it stood on a rock. Is that what he was saying? No. Uh, oh. <laughs> Beating time. While the kids see this as just a chore, Zach sees it as another opportunity to give a life lesson, and one of many they will listen to this week. Now, see, I achieve my contentment in life. Look at how contented these horses are. See, mm. I, I, uh, I get my contentment from that. He's just so boring. I'm sick of hearing his voice, to be honest. <laughs> the only thing he's concerned with is his farm. It's all he thinks about. And you can just see him, he just always sits there in a deep ponder, thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, he's a strange man indeed. One of your goals in life is to have a wife or bride that you can work with well. Because as you go through life, you're going to end up building a home and a car and all the things. Oh, no! Not interested, eh? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some of it and then stand there and watch them and then do it again when I feel like it. See, so I'm just kicking them around. I'm not really picking them up and putting them on the truck. Definitely not happy at all about the helping out on the farm. Sort of told him I was going for a dump. <laughs> he's quite, uh, he's quite gullible by the looks because, you know, I wouldn't really want to take up here, especially with the mountain lions running about. Both of them are nice people, generally, but they have got to be two of the most 
boring people I've ever met in my short lifetime. Did you miss me, Patty? Did you miss me? Yeah. I realize that they're testing me a little bit. They did do some sneaking, um, but I'm aware of it. We'll deal with it as necessary. The ranch is the way of life, and just like horses, Zach believes they will respond well to taming. The whip is just an extension of your body. You start from the ground. I am confident that we can make an example to the young people that are coming into our home, into our ranch. You step forward and try to just pitch it right at that steer's head. Very good. Oh, very good. Oh, yeah, very good. good. Oh, oh, very close. No, nah, man, I give up, eh? <laughs> <laughs> so it's useless. <laughs> You have your loop built. This is going to add a difficulty. These coils you can let go with your left hand. One of the problems with these young people is people have tried to make a difference in their life and have not quite had the desired effect. Otherwise, they wouldn't be here. These young people need to understand what effect that they have. The horses tell them that very quickly. So I want you to just kind of step on over here and just observe Viper for a couple seconds. When they accomplish something, then they can start to feel good about themselves. Then they can start to resist some of those temptations that they suffer under. Horses are very quick to understand your emotional state and very quick to respond to your person. What are your insides doing? What are your insides telling you? I don't know what he's going to do, but I'm... I'm sure about it. Okay. I'm not keen on riding a horse at all. If they try, I will probably run away. I don't want to ride a horse. I'm petrified of them. And I want you to just start to flick that stick right toward his rump. Kind of stand Is that like the end of him? Or the, like the rump or something? The rump, yeah. The okay, rump. yeah, 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 yeah. Now wiggle your string at his bump. Good, now stop. And I want you to do the same thing again. OK. The biggest thing I see with Emerald right now is I think she is very nervous and tense. And I think with the right people telling her that the job is good, that that would build her level of confidence in herself so then she could be successful instead of feeling that she wasn't doing any good. So then she doesn't get up, and then she doesn't turn up for work, and then she's scared of things. All right, there we go. So now walk away. Walk, walk somewhere. He's following. <laughs> OK, can I get out now? So make a C. Yep, there you go. And just walk right towards his bum. Good. Do you see how he moved his hip away from even that distance? Yeah. D did you notice that? Yep. Now just start rubbing on him. Just start petting him. Hello. And now I have her back up. Come on. Good. Yeah. Let me see if I can doesn't see seem, her. Doesn't she, seem happy today. No, she doesn't. I've never really been around horses, like, ever. It's not hard work, but it's just, like, I don't know, we could be doing better. Like skiing or something. <laughs> yeah, not this. He is used to not completing anything and not doing things. Riley's a little bit hard for me to figure out how to help him. I think that Riley just has not had quite enough time to warm up to the idea. Um, hopefully, Riley can start to see um, how cool it would be if he could master this challenge. The whole horse thing, I'm sweet feeding them and that and going around and, you know, tending to them, but I'm not too keen on riding them, eh? So right here, I just asked him to turn and kind of track towards me, and now I'm going to stop and see if he and I can go together backwards. And then I'm going to smile and have him come towards me. So I really just want you to feel like how good of a bond that these guys can kind of develop with you. And stop. 
and go back. And stop. And let's go back. I know what I said before, but now I got to know a horse, but I'm still like a little bit nervous. But I mean, like I got it to do so much around the pen, so that was good. That was really good. Oh, well done. I don't. Oh, this is scary up this high. Just a bit more. Bring it up through your hand that way as you reach down. Okay, so go ahead and ask him to do a little tiny turn. Do that indirect. There you go. Oh. Ask again. Tug on his face just a bit more. <laughs> I'm riding them. <laughs> I'm riding the horse. And, mm, it's a really nice feeling. Ah! This is the cool. Oh, don't eat my shoe. <laughs> Run around. Whoa! What are you? <laughs> Sorry, that's horsey stuff. Come on. So this time, squeeze and start to walk with your legs and see if you can walk around the perimeter of the ring. Okay, so you're gonna lead her. Just for a few seconds. I want you to keep a hold of it though. Okay. I feel like I achieved something. Because this one over here has. So yeah. Tell me about that. What do you feel you've achieved? I'm probably like amazed that I could actually do that. I'm quite proud actually. <laughs> The Emerald behaved pretty much exactly as I expected her to. I was very proud of her to the enthusiasm and, and her eagerness to be able to try it. <laughs> so yeah, no, it's been a good day. I'm gonna let it here. This is from your mum. Hi Emerald, hope your trip is going well. <laughs> and you are learning keeps and doing well. <laughs> I've written this letter to tell you how I feel about the way that you treat us. You will not listen to me at all. You... And you always dismiss me. You are a very selfish, self-destructive person and it hurts like hell when I see you doing that stuff. And you have shown what you can do. <laughs> and how amazing a caring, loving person you can be. I hope this trip will give you some tools to work with your self-destructiveness as you are a very loving person. Please read this and think about what I have said. I love you, Emerald, always. See you soon, love, Mummy. P.S. Looking forward to seeing you. We all miss you, honey. It's probably true. It is true. I think that, like, this place has been great. Because, like, we were just getting at each other all the time. And it was getting really, really... I felt sick every time I like looked at her and saw her. I want to go home, but not like right away. I'm not ready. I do know that I want to go home and make myself a better person. I want her to be my best friend again. <laughs> Faith ties into parenting. They believe service to God gives tools to kids, and once a week the family leave the ranch for church. I was very pleased when, when we suggested that we'd go to, go to Mass, and they said, can we go? I'm sick of hearing his voice, to be honest. He's just so boring. The only thing he's concerned with is his, his farm. I'd go wherever I could go, away from this man. 
and his um his companion, I guess, Patty. The reason that we're placed on this face of this earth is to give honor and glory to God. Secondly, service to others, whether you're serving somebody a, a glass of water or listening or uh, attending somebody at their deathbed. But in the New Testament, you have the commandment of love. And a place that operates on love is God's love shelter for the homeless, where the kids will not only serve lunch to those less fortunate, they'll also meet other teens who have been given a chance to change. Hi, I'm Jessica. Hi, I'm Imaro. Nice to meet you. So why are you here? Just uh, to see what, it, what it's like, eh? What living in a more like, controlled environment, I guess. You know, from yeah. back where I was doing at home. What kind of trouble did you get in? Um, oh, just, just too much, um, too much uh, drinking in that, eh? Drinker? Yeah. You dragon? Um, yeah, I guess you could say that. What yeah. about you? Well, yeah, I'm, I was selling drugs and I got caught selling to an informant. What were you flicking? Um, Oxycontin and a painkiller. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was bad into them. I went through treatment and stuff and I've like turned my life around complete 180. I mean, it's yeah. not it's not worth it to go down that road, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, definitely, man. It's, no, I'm, I'm I mean, not, I, I'm 22 years old. I've been incarcerated since I was 20. And it's like, those are your, goal, your golden years, you know what I'm saying? How old yeah. are you? Um, 17. 17, T. You're still young, bud. The sky's the limit. I just, I don't know what I'm going to do yet. You haven't seen nothing yet. Oh, we. So two pieces of chicken, right? Yeah. Looking good, guys. Yep. Do you want this on top of it? Oh, it looks like we're going to make it pretty easy. Oh. And I felt really good about doing my community service. <laughs> You can tell that some of them might be a little bit heavy on drugs or alcohol, or some of the people it just might not go well for them, like whatever they've done has failed. But I like the way that they're doing it here because it's like a bed and breakfast sort of thing, and it's really nice. The other Sweet, bro. Yeah. I've spoken to them in New Zealand, not to hobos, but like, looks like these guys let the opportunity sort of slip them by. Yeah. Or maybe they had an opportunity and they blew it. write this letter to you to try and help you understand how I feel about our relationship. Goals that I'm going to achieve to make your life easier. We'll not talk to you like dirt under my shoe. We'll stop swearing at you. I just want you to know I do love you even though I haven't showed it. Love Emerald. I think that I have the power in myself to make myself a better person and also being on this show has really improved my personality and who I think I want to be, not who I am right now. My mother is a very sensitive person and I do have a caring heart and I do have a nice personality, I just need to show it more. I need to reach in and grab it up. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so. With the week nearly up, there seems to have been a change of heart. Oh, that's a very nice job. Thank you. You're very welcome. Self-inflicted castration is not the... Wouldn't be too pleasant, would it? I've got to be honest with you, you're actually setting yourself right up for a, uh, a chop chop, eh? Parents need to focus on their kids, not focus on other things in their life. The kids have to be aware that they are the number one focus of their mother and dad. And that's not a very sharp chisel. It's... I'm just going to kick it away from my nuts as well, eh? Why? <laughs> because I don't want to end up like your, uh, your two horses. Uh, that, might be, that might be too deep, yeah. Too might, deep? Yeah, it might be too deep. You want to maybe work all the way around. My opinion of Zach's changed quite drastically. I think he's quite, he's quite a cool guy, like, he's quite relaxed and stuff. He's, yeah, 
He's definitely growing on me, eh? Yeah. Now we go ahead and pull your chisel. Just pull it straight up. He's maybe quite a wise little man. <laughs> he he knows more than he lets on, eh? Yeah, I had a little a, a little feeling about that actually. He was always a bit, yeah. He's sneaky. There, there is a deep down desire to improve their life. Each one of them is responding a little bit differently, and they've learned some very bad habits over the years. And many of it is simply coping skills. Sometimes who they are, what they are, and how they've been brought up is not entirely their, their fault, but it is their responsibility from here out to, to fix it and to become productive, productive young people. And a big part of that is about respect, which is just what Maria hopes for Riley today. Okay, and then you take this and you hang on to the mane. Now those gloves will be a bit slick, so I'll help you. I was nervous, but this horse, it approached me. So I was like, fuck, it's cooler than the other one. The other one's a little bastard. This one's the man. Go ahead and step on up to put your hip next to the saddle. Just pull. Good job. She's just fixing her weight and step back down. Good, and step back up. Good, and step back down. All right, so this time, swing all the rest of the way on. Well done. Relax your legs. Oh, I kind of got cramped in my leg, eh? Yeah, I saw that. It's not as bad as I thought it would be being up here, eh? It's actually kind of, kind of sweet. Good. I saw Emerald do it, so I thought oh, I might as well do it as well. And then once I was up here, once I was up there, um, it was actually quite, quite cool, eh? Quite a cool experience. So now, right away, can you feel how cautious she's being? Yeah. So she's just feeling you out. This is mean. Mean? Yeah, like cool. <laughs> I don't know if I've heard that slang word yet. I'm not actually sure what might have gone through his head last night. He mentioned he watched a bit of a John Wayne movie, so maybe he just started to get a little bit more excited for the prospect. Um, hopefully he, he really uh, enjoyed it as much as his smile and laughter made it seem. Uh, so I was, I was very, very proud of Riley. It's just the kind of turnaround Riley's mum had hoped for. Dear Riley, Firstly, I want you to know how much I love you and how much I have missed you since you have been away. It was a difficult decision for me to make, letting you go halfway around the world, not knowing what was in store for you. The last couple of years have been worrying for me, not always knowing where you were, what you were doing and who you were with. This is where I have found it difficult to put boundaries in place when you had no respect for my wishes or good advice. Finally, I don't think you realise how much you hurt me when you show a total lack of respect by using offensive and unacceptable language while speaking to me. When you were little, you were the dearest wee boy with your unique and lovable personality, and I don't want to see my beautiful son come to any harm physically or emotionally. The future is yours, Riley, and it is up to you to make the most of it. Love you heaps, Mum. That was quite intense. It is true what she says to me. I, I never, I never tell her um, like where I'm going. I pretty much just say, "See you later," and have a good day, and just go. When I get home, I'd probably um, put in more of an effort, eh? Because it makes, it makes things go much faster, much of the work faster, and it keeps, it keeps mum happy as well. Yeah. For the family is everything, and they have chosen a special place to give the kids one last piece of advice before they go home. This is where my mother and dad are buried at. They, they, they died young. I hope you guys live a happy and productive life. Well, I would like to say that I think this week both of you have done something you didn't think you were brave enough to do. You've accomplished a whole lot with the horses. You've both done a very good job. Thank you, guys, for accepting us into your lovely home. My pleasure. 
It really means a lot. Thank you. Thank you. I gotta say, when I first arrived here, I thought that the family were all crazy. But now that I've actually got to know them, I've actually realised that they're like a awesome family. They're really nice. I feel like I can do a lot more with my life. And I feel like I've become more of a better person. Emerald right now seems relaxed and happy, or she was very nervous and tense to start with. The, the change I see in Riley, he gained a little bit of confidence that he was capable of being compatible with those around him. I'd like to apologize for what I said about them earlier because, yeah, I was quite, I was being quite nasty towards them, I think. And, um, yeah, I, I just think that they're really cool. They live, they live a good, a good life. It's um, not, you know, they're, they're never in a rush for anything. Thanks, guys, for um, accepting us into your home for the week and uh, teaching us a bunch of cool things. It's been really fun and a good experience. We hope you take a lot of these lessons back into your own life, and we hope that you always remember that there's always a place that you can feel safe at. Yeah. We'd love to come back and see you. You'll we always be enjoy welcome. that. Yeah. Lovely. Be good. I will. See ya. Thank you very much. Yeah. It's been very nice. Oh, it's really good. Oh. <laughs> oh, <well. laughs> Take care of hey, yourself, Emily. Get into a routine. Thank you. Thank you. You did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. You're it's welcome. Awesome. Yep. Cheers, man. You Thanks for teaching me the yoga. Awesome. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I was pretty hopeless at the yard hole. <laughs> Emerald and Riley, would, if they ever wanted to come back to the ranch, um, they would always be welcome. say I'm a little bit excited. <laughs> not really sure what to expect. I've been thinking about this day since basically I left, like coming back and seeing how it would be with Mum and... All I wanted from it was that Emerald learned something about life and that it's not just about her. Lots of fun? Lots of photos. Lots of photos, <laughs> yeah. I wrote your letter. Did you? Yeah. Cool. Do you want to read it? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Oh, that's nice. Very nice. Cool. Learn lots? Yep. Cool. Mum, I feel like it's been years since we've talked and I got on. I would love it if you would try and let me open up to you. I know we don't always see eye to eye. We always tend to yell at one another and never listen. <laughs> so I thought I'd write this letter to you. What I'd like from you is to hold you in my arms and feel love. If something happens and we don't see eye to eye, I'd love for you and I to sit down and talk about it on a mature level and after the conversation, I'd like to, to seal the deal with a big fat hug. <laughs> I just want you to know I do love you even though I haven't shown it for all you've done for me. I thank you. I hope this means as much to you as it does to me. Your loving daughter. I love you so much, Mummy. <laughs> so you had a good trip, eh? Yep. I love you too. Very, very much. That letter was unreal. It was just amazing. Yeah, um, really pleased to see her. She did miss it lots and lots. Zach and Patty are really, really awesome people. Um, they have actually like shown me, taught me a lot, and I respect them for that. And I just missed you so much. <laughs> I missed you too, heaps and heaps and heaps, and I love you here. <laughs> I like these play look so cool. <laughs> Good to see you. You too. Mm -hmm. I did miss you. Yeah. <laughs> was a nice way, wasn't I? <laughs> they looked like she loved the letter, which was good because I, 
it, I put a lot of my heart into that letter and I think it came through in the end. Yeah. Looking forward to him being back. I am. Hope he's come back a renewed boy with um, a change in outlook, perhaps. Hello! My boy, you're back! Yeah, I got back oh, safe. Oh, good! Hey! <laughs> How are you feeling? Oh, good. It was... Oh, my God, I've missed you. It was awesome, eh? Was it? Yeah. Great. Sweet. Oh, look, you got all new gears and yeah. everything. Oh, you spent all, spent all my money, have you? No, no, no. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> it's got, it seems like, no. ten weeks. <laughs> so, have you, are you a um, reformed boy now? Yeah. Are you? Yeah. Good. I'd say so. Good boy. They, they taught me to have a bit more respect for my... Um, my elders and stuff. This is just one thing I got you. Oh, wow. I got you a handbag. I don't know if like Lovely. A emerald helped me pick it up. Did she? And I got you these as well. Oh, cool. My mum is the most wonderful woman ever. <laughs> Being there, I miss her like crazy. Thank you. Yeah, I've learned that um, I should probably have more respect for my mum and what she, um, what she thinks is best other than just, you know, doing what pleases me. Maybe think about what, um, what pleases her. Mm -hmm. Give me a mother. Yes. Give me a mum. Good boy. That's what I was hoping. It's growing up in 10 days. Yeah. Yeah, the, these boots have helped. I'm proud of you, Riley. I am really proud of you. Good boy.